And the big story broke on Friday in the Chronicle. And it's funny how some stories break. So the minister or the former minister and the husband had um, sent the maid and the two, two house helps and the other accomplices to court on a criminal matter. To the, to the police. To the police, thank you. And the police investigator had then proceeded based on his investigations to go to court for the court to then charge them with different counts of either stealing or conspiracy to steal. And once the story gets into that system, the media gets it. So it's funny how indirectly, of course, theft is wrong, right? So you don't you don't steal under any pretext. But the big story is not the theft. The big story is the minister. And rightly so. All right. And I feel like this is is good, is good in the sense of how the media angles the story. So we do a lot of theft stories, and we are not downplaying theft at all. We do theft stories, at particularly in page three of the Ghanaian Times, almost every day. Okay, But for the media to obviously know that once a minister is involved. And I, the other point which I think a lot of people miss is the time of the theft, alleged theft. Because July, August, September, October 2022 was probably the worst time for the Ghanaian economy in living history, at least in the past 10 years. For the plummeting of the currency, inflation rates going through the roof, debt levels going up, Ghana being locked out of the financial markets. And there are all kinds of things happened between July, August, September, October last year. So which was the same time that the minister allegedly had over a million dollars in cash in a house. And you, you look at the, there are so many levels to the story. And I feel like we need to spend our time to, to look at the levels. For example, you're talking about a period where the economic managers were blaming speculative activity of dollar hoarders for some of the city's woes. I remember quite distinctly when the dollar moved from around 6.4 to eventually 12. Some were even predicting 15 in those three months. And a lot of people were selling their cities to buy dollars, which was becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy of more expensive dollars. You remember that period? Mm -hmm. So the, the issue, and I know there were people who had dollar mortgages who simply said, wrote to their banks and said, look, I can't keep up. Because when I took the mortgage, it was like 1.8. It became 4.3, which is already a problem. And then it jumped to 6. Mm -hmm. So that 6 around June, July was a big issue. And then it went to 7, it went to 8. It was almost like it, it went up by a CD every two weeks. And around September, it got to almost 15. You know, So to think that this amount of money, a million dollars, 300,000 euros, and all these things were kept in a home within that period when... I believe the economic managers were saying, look, if we all hoard foreign currency, or we, if we don't, essentially, if you, if I don't know whether it's hoarding, that's the word she did, but to keep such a physical amount yeah, of money. Hoarding would be... Um, it's a wrong word. But the point, I'm, yeah. the point I'm making is that at the time, people were minded to liquidate their CD investments and get USD. Because the level of the dollar then was so high that people felt that if I purchase dollars, when things come back, I will make more money. All right. So I, I think that's that's there's a story there in, in that in that in that sense. And also here we are saying that people should have confidence in the financial system. All right. So when the the initial banking crisis happened in 2017, and then people were asking us on the show whether they should take their money to banks or keep their money at home. And we said, do what is responsible that if you for any financial institution, when people go to the financial institution and all demand their money and there's a run, the institutions will collapse, mm -hmm. right? And the funds, the banks were struggling for liquidity at the time. Mm -hmm. and I remember there was a time that if you look for certain foreign currency, you even get. Mm -hmm. So if somebody who is a politically exposed person of that level has that amount of money fiscally in their house, mm -hmm. what does this say about the, what the BOG has been telling us about the, the financial system? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a lot of levels of angles to the story, okay? And then, of course, the fact that the money was being removed over a period and it was not even apparent. Mm -hmm. Because if you read the, the narration, it was when the man chanced upon one of the house helps in the room that they realized that these people were probably stealing our money. And then so what was, was the money being kept there as a, a safe, a vote? Was there more? You know? So, you know, a lot of times when we talk about 
mis misdeeds and corruption, most people say, oh, what law have I broken? You know, there's also moral law, okay? And I feel like if you hold public position, we should not, and I'm not saying that we should move away from black letter law, which is what you deal with, but th there's conduct of public offices. There are ethics of public office, all right? So I feel like the, the statement that attributed to the president in terms of receiving the minister's resignation and quickly touting her loyalty and integrity, I think it's premature. You know, the, the issue of public morality should not be in the bosom of the president. All of us, of course, he's the, he's the, he's the custodian, he's the leader of the country. So he must send a signal that everybody will be held to the highest standard of conduct, which includes morality and ethics and all of those things. Now, I am not quoting a specific law violated, and we can go into BOG, um, notices, we can go into the BOG law and those things, but that's not what we're going to do. But the question you're asking is that, if you look at all the circumstances around the currency, the economy at the time, and people's perceptions about corruption, and the levels of poverty in the country, and the amount of money a minister is paid, how do you justify keeping, almost when you put all, the, when you calculate all the, if the, 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 the total value of everything that has been stolen, it's about $1.6 million in some one person's house. You know, and you, you, you are you telling me that that doesn't raise moral questions, that doesn't raise questions about, um, I mean, it's, it's it, 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 you know, it's not everything that you should be able to name that you should be, you should be in a position to judge or describe. Just you know what I'm saying? There are things you can see and say, this is not conduct, um, What's the word they use? Becoming of a public officer. All right. So I, I'm a bit worried by the the speed with which the purported response from the president seeks to exonerate the minister. And almost um, sort of pigeonholing her resignation around loyalty to the government and the government's image. Okay. Is that what this is about? That it's about whether somebody's image is good or bad? What signal are you sending to citizens? All right, in terms of profligacy, well, we shouldn't we shouldn't criminalize wealth, but if somebody has such an amount of money in their house, and it took I don't know three or four months for somebody to even discover that the money was lost, and then we are in a period of austerity, and then the minister comes and says, the finance minister comes and says we should all bedding share, we should all chip in, and we're talking about salary, uh, what? Thirty percent. Thirty percent salary yes. cut. I mean, if somebody has a amount of money in their, their house, they probably don't even need a salary. Do you get my point? And this is perceptions, which are legitimate. So I feel like the, 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 the letter the president wrote purportedly in response to that uh, resignation, I think the tone does not, is not sensitive to the feeling of Ghanaians at all. Do you understand me? At least you can, ask, you can accept the letter and say, well, thank you for your service. Let the, the, uh, the chips fall where they may. And the other point is that there hasn't even been a formal process of investigation of anything. Do you get my point? And we've said this on countless occasions that why, why are we digitalizing the economy? Why are we making noise about digitalization of the economy? Because we want to reduce cash in the system. Because we all accept that the more cash you have in the system, the more likely it is to pr promote corruption, either the proceeds of it or the promotion of it. That's why the, that's why the whole argument about digitalization makes sense to everybody. Right, so why would a minister of such a standing be keeping such amounts of money in their house and you don't think he raises questions? For which reason we should even have OSB talking to them about what are your sources of income? Compare that to the assets declared before taking public office and check if there's any reason to investigate further, if this is not a smoking gun leading to... Do you get my point? There are so many layers of this and it is, we should not let's, not... let's not make it a politicization. So... The, to make the government look bad. I mean, you are already you are already smelling bad. So why you know, why are you saying we should make it, like why are we so interested in whether I look bad or not? As if the public cannot discern that this type of thing is, is, is one of the reasons why politicians have lost credibility. Okay, where young politicians I'm not referring to this uh, particular politician now. Young politicians that we know, we all went to school, we slept in the same dorm with in two years of becoming public officers, sometimes not even ministers, have properties scattered over the place, which public documents leaks show. 
people who are not very young ministers, young people. You know, if and if that is not a problem for us at the highest level of government, then I'm I'm I'm, I'm sorry. Do you get me? So the tone of that response, like, oh, you are loyal. What, what are you trying to say to Ghanaians? Do you get me? You know, it, and this is not the first time. We've seen somebody died and the, the person's will became public knowledge. And then it's like, oh, it's almost like Ghanaians are envious. You know, what work do, do people do that when they get to public office, they can own all the properties they own within the time that they own it? You remember the... The, the 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 will of Sir John. It became a public discussion. You can't talk ill of a dead man, but you can also investigate the conduct of a public officer even after they are gone. And if we are serious about fighting corruption, we should not make this a, an a NDC MPP issue. All right, because there are people who have served this country for for thirty years. They retire on salaries on on pensions less than five thousand cities, and they also do their best. But people who somehow enter political office. Sometimes they are not even in government. They are just politicians. And you are hearing of houses here. You are hearing of amounts of money here. It is, you know, it's serious. It's, it's serious. So I am not an expert, but I think that <clears throat> the OSP has something to look into, if for nothing at all, because he's a politically exposed person. The amounts are very large. So whilst that court case goes on, I think there needs to be a separate probe into the sources of wealth of the couple. I think yes. there needs to be. It is not witch hunting. And oh, the presidency well. should not write to exonerate her. It is not in his place. He should let institutions work. It's not his job. The executive implements economic policy, implements leadership for the country, foreign policy. The executive does not decide who is guilty or innocent. That's not their job. It's the judiciary's job. Let's allow separation of powers to work. And whoever wrote that statement should be minded of those things. The perceptions. We are talking about people's confidence in democracy. It's always an issue. CDD will do a survey and say, people have lost confidence in politicians. And they blame the media for it. Who, if people lose confidence in our politics, is it the media's fault or the politicians' fault? Is it our fault for breaking the story? Or the politicians' fault for trying to gloss over it? And making it look like anybody who <clears throat> talks about it has something against the government or the minister? No. There should be a standard for public office. Somebody resigned or was sacked <clears throat> in this country because the person had a tip where the person stated a motive. <clears throat> you remember? A motive that she wanted to raise a million dollars as a minister. I think she was the deputy minister of communication. And the president at the time sacked the person because the pub public backlash was that we didn't put you there to be minister to, to, be, to be looking for a million dollars. So even though <clears throat> you haven't explicitly committed a crime, the standard of holding a deputy ministerial position and to be seen in a leaked tape speaking loosely, including saying that as for you want to raise a million dollars, means that your position is untenable. So the president sacked it. Okay, so that standard must be the same. You know, you can't say that, well, this one there, and we haven't said she's stolen money, but the point we are making is that it's the same thing. Do you get me? It, it, of course, this is not a leaked tape. This is a case that is legitimately being pursued in court. But you, you cannot tell me that having such an amount of money in a house within, I don't know how many years of being a minister, how much are they paid? How much is the president paid? Do you understand? These are questions we must ask if we want the, if we want the, the, the polity to improve. And all right-thinking Ghanaians have to ask for further and better particulars of this matter. And that's the only way we can salvage our democracy. Because you, you cannot, you, you, it cannot be that because the person is in your party, it means that, oh, it's okay. The person has integrity. Let the institutions prove it. Let the institutions prove it. Because all of us are people who, are, who we know have integrity. But when matters come up, we let the, the law run its course. Okay, so I'm not sure <clears throat> if I am delving into legal waters that I'm not supposed to, and you are here to tidy it up. But my initial sense is that that acceptance letter doesn't send the right signal about the intentions of the of the president. And I'm not sure if I've put it rightly. It's a minute to eight. Let me let Nathan do his segment and I'll come back to you on this. But, but, but my sense is that, <clears throat> forgive me, the, the tone and the speed with which the letter sought to vindicate the former minister is, 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 is worrying. 
It's, it's, it's not what is this not. It's not correct. Anyway, I stand to be corrected. You are here too. You went to law school, so you will know. All right, so it's a minute to wait. By the way, <clears throat> the other side story as well, girlfriend, I think you can help me with that story. So there are a number of ministries that the president brought in. Sanitation was one. Aviation was one. Railway was the other. Last week, there was a, a scandal around paying $2 million for feasibility studies. And you see, Ghanaians sometimes, because we mention dollars, that's over 22 million cities for feasibility studies. Mm. Go ahead. This is feasibility studies for SkyTrain. We have rail, we have rail in Accra, which is not working. <laughs> now, you can use $22 million to do a number of roads if you want to. So why will you pay a company 22 million cities, which is $2 million, for feasibility studies for a SkyTrain? And it's not a big story. Like, do you understand me? We are making it look like, do you know what $2 million is for what, what feasibility studies? Okay, so what is the result of a feasibility study? The former minister says, I didn't make the payment. This is Jogate. He didn't authorize the payment. It's gift. Made it's gift, gift. So how much has gift invested that they can pay $2 million of our money to somebody to do feasibility studies for SkyTrain? SkyTrain. Go to uh, Nairobi. They have train. There's a, a, a rail from Kaduna to Abuja on the ground. We've not finished our train. And we are paying somebody $2 million to do feasibility studies for a sky train. So my question to you is, there are three ministries. Sanitation, railway, what's the third one that the president created? Aviation. Aviation. Have they really lived up to expectation? It just in the context of these two weeks. Okay, I will do that for you. You know, Charlie, so I, I think there are a couple of points we're raising. Yeah. Is the resignation enough the, to, to clear the doubt around the integrity of the office holder? Is there something else that needs to be done? Because I am minded that um, somebody sent a message which I which I thought was interesting. That um, I, let me find it. It's saying, basically saying that. Um, give me a minute. Good. It says, "Good morning, Bernard." There could be a variety of reasons why a minister of state in a developing country would choose to keep millions of dollars in their room. Mm -hmm. Some possible explanations could include corruption, embezzlement of public funds illicit activities, or personal financial interest. However, it's important to emphasize that these are all speculative reasons and will require proper investigation and evidence to confirm from Bernard Che, from, from, from Bernard Chebi Amam from. Yes. Uh, do you agree with him? I agree with him, which is why I'm a bit surprised that um, her residence has not been visited by, or at least we are not aware of visits to her residence by BNI, Ioko, FIC, whichever one they prefer. Mm. Because, one, let us understand something, and I'm going to, I've said this a lot. I think the pervasive corruption in our society and in our country means that we tend not to know the value of money. Mm. And I've said this several times on the show. A million dollars is a lot of money. I re-emphasize this when we spoke about the Kwame Nkrumah Mausoleum recently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It cost $3.5 million. To put up that whole thing. To put up that thing. That we wow. saw, we've seen there. That is going to end the country so much money. It cost $3.5 million. Wow. So, so a third of that. When Almost there. Probably when... Yeah. A person has available in hard currency one point six million dollars in a spot. We cannot simply say, "Well, oh, the person has money. What is your issue? What is uh, you can you cannot speculate. You can. It is not the kind of money that regular people." are supposed to have mm -hmm. in any society. Yeah, not, not just Ghana. Not just Ghana. Even if you have it, the systems are such that you are not supposed to have it in your house. Mm -hmm. It is supposed to be kept somewhere mm -hmm. so that you can explain it. There's a reason why if I make a bank transaction of a certain amount, 
the bank immediately calls the FIC. Sky, true or false? Mm-hmm. That, hey, Godfrey Dakotobuafo has just made a request that X amount of money is coming in. Why do they do that if it does not matter? What is the bank, what is FIC's business that I have money passing? And this is banking. This is the supposed, this is legal. This mm-hmm. is the standard. I'm supposed to put the money in there. But even when that up, they check, ah, this yeah. amount is some way, this person Irre- doesn't do this. Transfers. It's irregular. Yeah. They will notify authorities to come and check. Yeah. I will have to go and explain yeah. alongside my lawyer, Richard Sky, yeah. Yeah. that yeah. Yeah. this is why that is happening. Yeah. So we need to understand that one, it is not normal to have that kind of money on your person. It should not be normal. And it should not be normalized. We have yes. <clears throat> we have come to normalize it in Ghana. So we have and I'm building up, so yeah, please allow me. Yeah, yeah. So we have a situation where now we call people millionaires. They are dollar millionaires. Hmm. We are selling two million dollar properties in Ghana. Three million dollar land in Ghana. And you ask yourself when you put all of that together in the economy, does this look like a country where that kind of money actually revolves in? Good point. You see, because the nature of money is that when that kind of money rotates in the economy, based on how we have come to undervalue money, so we see a million dollars as being, oh, this person has two million. The land is three million. This one is five million. So we have that volume of transactions happening and you look at hmm. the state of our tax collection, Charlie? the state of this country and Re- most of the Re- parts Re- of Re- the Re- country short, that we short revenue short falls all over. Government broke going for IMF bailout. There is dissonance. Absolutely. So that should tell people that there is a problem hmm. or that kind of money might not act, be actual money that is there. Mm-hmm. The other point I want to make as I built, there is, it is very important to distinguish between making a million dollars plus and having a million dollars. Can you repeat that? We have to distinguish between making a million and having a million. It's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. Hmm. You can earn a million, but in earning the million, you are paying taxes. You are doing all sorts of things. You are adding value to the tune of a million. A million. Or more. Having the actual million means that you have done you you a, a lot of rich people will tell you that they are millionaires, mm-hmm. but it is tied up in a lot of things. Yep. So for a rich person to tell you, oh, I can give you a million dollars, that person might have to spend three or four days in the bank. For the bank to say, we will try and put this together for you. Mm. It is not simple money. Mm-hmm. So I'm just trying to let us understand that a million plus has significant value. Second one that I would now let me mm. enter the whole issue. And I was going to ask if from based on what you said, it raises questions. And if it does, what 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 are some of the questions that Yes, it does raise having, questions. It does because raise when, questions. Because when you clarify when you different difference between making and, and having. So does it raise and a witness a public you, officer? Yes, you have to explain yes. how you made it and how you have it. Wonderful. And there are institutions that deal with that. So question. if somebody if that if, if a government agency or a university agency wants to you to prove how you made a million or got a million, it is not witch hunting, is it? No, it is not. It's not witch hunting. Because because I just as I just No, within our legal so I'm just asking you, can can Yoko or somebody Simply randomly say, okay, we've heard that you have this I'll amount deal with of money. That. Let them so let can you? Yeah, I was just wondering whether that's okay. Let no, so no, you can come in, Sky. I can share the well, time. Just on explain that, that. Yeah, within the scope of the the special prosecutor's office, mm-hmm. they can deal with that. If you look at the establishing authority, mm-hmm. uh, which is the act establishing them, and then also the regulations that you know found the operations, mm-hmm. they can acting on complaints or on their own get involved in this matter. And my understanding is that thus far, over 200 complaints have been received by the Special Prosecutor's Office um, from diverse sources, largely from social media. You know, you can file a complaint through 
you know their social media uh, mm. platforms and all mm. of that you can also send a formal email to them mm-hmm. inviting them to investigate a particular matter uh, or you can even go there verbally and speak with so them so this is unexplained wealth this is I'm talking about this particular matter. No, yeah, I'm talking about the complaints that have been filed, the 200 complaints. So, no, so it is an allegation of possible wrongdoing. Ah, so those corruption. all of those have been filed on separate issues. Yeah, yes. No, I'm talking about this particular matter. The the matter we are talking. No, no. About. Oh, so you are saying that with between Friday and today, yeah. people over 200. I have it on authority that over 200 that special prosecutor's office. Uh-huh. Has re- is it special prosecutor? Yes, special prosecutor. Yes, yes. yes. Has, has received, received over two hundred. Well, in excess of two hundred complaints from diverse sources. Oh, really? Ghanaians raising issues about the resigned minister that they they expect the OSP to look into. Exactly. Okay. So wow. you continue. Oh, that, that's then, interesting. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, to the matter at hand. Yeah. I read the. St- story over the weekend. Um, on Friday I wasn't here. I wasn't feeling too well. Mm. But I caught up with the story over the weekend. Oh, and <laughs> the first thing I asked myself was where again are the institutions that I made mention of? You see, because she has reported the theft of her property mm-hmm. to the police. Mm-hmm. That's a state institution. Mm-hmm. The state institution is acting upon that complaint. Mm-hmm. So we have a court case, mm-hmm. which is what has brought this matter to the fore. And this is a criminal case. And this is a criminal case. And the law is handling that part. Mm-hmm. But what perhaps bothered me a bit was the lack of recognition that this would be red flagged as an issue. Mm-hmm. Because when a public officer reports of loss of such an of amount, loss of such an amount immediately alarm bells will be triggered in certain quarters mm. because then we 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 should not take it as normal mm-hmm. that a public officer comes out and says i've lost a million dollars mm-hmm. and these people stole it yeah they are criminals as alleged criminals or they are suspects or this they are that mm-hmm. so deal with them mm-hmm. but you don't expect the institutions that have been set up by the same country to point a mirror at you and say, hold on, hold on, hold How on. Come by that money? How did you come by that money? In the first place. And those are questions that need to be answered. It is mm-hmm. important that point you made about perception. Yep. The perception of it, it's not about, you, you don't need an exact, it, ha, it does not have to be black and white, everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. The corruption index, it's a perception index. Yep. It's what people think. Mm-hmm. Now, once that perception continues to go up, you have a problem because then people start behaving in a certain way because that perception leads to people assuming that this is what people do. This is who they are. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they start acting or responding to you in a certain way because they know that the system does not work based on that perception that they have. That perception leads them to make certain conclusions. Mm -hmm. So the point I'm making is with this particular situation at play, there has to be speed to explain some of these situations quickly. Mm-hmm. You see, it's, these are not things that should last long. Otherwise, it just... This is not a committee yeah. probe yeah. or... No. Within a matter of a week or so, mm. certain basic yeah. points should have been established. But one of the things the law people may have to help us do is what parameters and what things they should be looking to find out. Mm-hmm. Do you understand? Because as I read in that message, there are a variety of reasons why somebody will have that amount in their house. And you can proceed either on the basis of saying, we don't even say there's any wrongdoing. We just want to find out. So the, one of the things I want Scott to do when we come back is, can they just proceed on an inquiry mm-hmm. to say, come and show cause, uh-huh. all right, of why you have this without mm-hmm. necessarily even impugning some level of wrongdoing yes or they can say that when we look at the assets you declared yes to which, the, which, general, which record, is a public record and your salary mm-hmm. and the various things that your family does That's, we don't see any just cause why you should have this amount of money in your house explain so explain mm-hmm. do you follow me so there can be some basis for doing this yes. but i wanted to do a couple of things like i come to those points it's a minute to, uh, it's 8 29 i should say we are taking your comments so the two premises we are building this morning is 
beyond the residential of the Ministry of Orientation, do you think the system should do more? And the system includes the, the investigative bodies. And then the second question, the ministry that's living heads and other ministries have brought, have brought in railway ministry, $2 million spent on feasibility studies, really? Are we getting value for money? In the meantime, we'll be reading some of your comments um, in terms of the questions we're asking. Is the resignation of the minister enough to uphold the standards of public morality? What is the standard of public morality? That's the question. Is there a standard for public office holders? Is there, uh, a, so is there a document of the ethics and standards of public office holders that is available for all of us to look into? What documents will have that? And um, how obvious is it if somebody breaches those? I'm bringing this because, again, I refer to the Victoria Hammer issue. She was sacked because there was a tip which was audio, uh, which was leaked, showing her saying to somebody in a phone conversation, allegedly, that she was her, her plan for being in government was to make a million dollars. And at the time, it led to so much controversy. Initially, sent a resignation letter, but at least from what I know, the president sacked her yeah. because the Minister for Information confirmed at the time, I argued that she had been sacked. So the president dismissed her because the, the belief was that the conduct in that, exhibited in that tip did not meet the high standards of public office for which reason she was sacked as the Deputy Minister for Communication. Now, I'm asking this in relation to this, that sometimes wrong may not be explicitly done, but there could be a suggestion or to put yourself in a position that can bring the government into disrepute. Yes. And when I read the tone of the minister's resignation, it's almost to say this controversy is not needed by the government. So it's in a sense of saying this is not what is it's going to make the government look bad. So I'm resigning. But the flip side is that that's her judgment. What about the government's own judgment? So the judgment managed to say beyond your resignation, we think that this type of thing raises too many questions and therefore there should be an investigation to clear you. Yes. For which reason we will interdict you or put you on some frozen thing until we get... Mm -hmm. do, do you get my point? But it, it all happened very quickly. The president accepts the resignation, says she's loyal, she's integrity, so whatever, so let's move on. And I feel like it does not... It does not go to the bottom of the matters of public confidence in the government's anti-corruption fight. And that can only... Which is why... Um, I am making the point that we need, if, for her own good, and the government's yeah. own good, and the good of all public officials, mm -hmm. there needs to be an expeditious settlement of this matter. This will not take three weeks or four weeks. Can it be that quick? No, at least a basic establishment of fact. And then a basic establishment of the fact that institutions are also interested in this. Mm -hmm. You see, because... If institutions are not interested in this, that same institution cannot come and be interested in me. Mm. You understand? Yeah. Why are you? Why would you choose to ignore a basic inquiry into that source of wealth, mm -hmm. but will be interested in my source of wealth then? Very good point. And then there are people who are saying, I don't know whether this is a legitimate um, the deduction. Mm -hmm. So they said a $1 million in cash <clears throat> is at least 100 bundles of $100 bills. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, a bundle is pretty big, big yeah. which is about $10,000 per bundle. Mm -hmm. And then 300,000 euros Euro is at least 60 bundles of 50 euro bills because euros are in $50 bills. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of money now. So if you lose these monies over a period of four months. And not recognize that you've lost them. So there are two possibilities. Either there was a lot of it or the money was at a place that you don't frequent regularly. Mm -hmm. But from the narration in the court, in the investigator's story, mm -hmm. this is a bedroom mm -hmm. or a room belonging to somebody. Mm -hmm. So you assume that they go there pretty regularly. Yeah. So, and again, that's why somebody says these are all speculations. But you know, you can logically make a deduction and then somebody can come and prove it or not. Yeah. Do you get me? So how did that amount of money get taken over a period and it only took the man seeing her in the room mm -hmm. to even notice that there was money being stolen. Mm. Do you follow me? That's another question that's coming. But Sky, I wanted to just come back because I don't know if there is a law about um, illicit enrichment. 
All right, this is the word that my friends in anti-corruption are, are using for me. Now, this is the, the, the full message. Bernard, illicit enrichment has not been criminalized in Ghana yet. So investigative bodies can investigate the unexplained wealth. But until an illicit activity is established... So let me, let me, read, the, let me read the thing more. Bernard, please, one thing should be clear. Illicit enrichment has not been criticized. Sorry, not criminalized. Criticized in Ghana. Until, um, so investigative bodies can investigate the unexplained wealth, but until an illicit activity is established, she cannot be prosecuted for illicit enrichment. I don't know if that yes. makes sense. Yes, it Let me does make sense. She says, the investigative bodies can investigate the unexplained wealth, mm -hmm. but until an illicit activity is established, yes. she cannot be prosecuted for illicit enrichment. So if, she could have family lands that she sold and got that money. Yes. And decided to keep it in her house. It, it, it makes sense. So, but the first part is what we are looking for. So he's saying that illicit enrichment has not been criticized in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But illicit, illicit enrichment means making riches from an illegal activity. No, I'm talking about the part about something needs to happen before so that. So the investigative bodies can investigate the unexplained wealth. So let us investigate it. That is what we are saying. Are we going to have an investigation let's, to make that determination? That's a good point. Let, uh, Before uh, you can then move to point to move two. To point so, two. So point one is wealth. How the money came about. Then point two is the source. Yes. I want to depart entirely from uh, the from me. message from... Uh, oh, from this person? Yes, I mean... Uh, By the way, get article 286 for me, Constitution. I'll, I'll deal with all of Clause, that. clause 4. No, okay. I'll deal with all Okay, of wonderful. Um, so, first of all, let me, let me proceed on the basis that the facts we are dealing with are facts having to do with an alleged criminal activity that happened in the home of the minister. Yeah. Property, according to the charge sheet we've seen in the public domain, yeah. belonging to her, her husband. and the husband, yeah. stolen by two households. Mm -hmm. A report was made to the police. Yeah. They were picked up, investigations carried out, mm -hmm. five people charged, yes. including these two households or mm -hmm. former households. Mm -hmm. Three other people involved, a former boyfriend, uh, allegedly of one of the house elves, mm -hmm. a current or serving boyfriend <laughs> of one of the house elves, yeah. and, and then, then a father, the father of one of, of them. One of them. Okay. So those are the facts. Yes, sir. Now, the facts, to be clear, don't tell us that the minister has conducted a criminal act. Thank you. What she did as a dutiful citizen was to report theft in her home. Yes. Now, what is happening, which is proper, is that the good people of Ghana mm. are demanding accountability. Yeah. That how come a minister of state, whose salary we all know in the public domain, the husband, we are told, is an architect, but we don't know his salary. But how come a minister would have that much money in her home? How much did, he ha did she have that when some was taken away, it wasn't until one of the girls was caught allegedly red-handed in their private room that they became conscious of the need to even investigate what had gone missing. So it is a trail mm -hmm. that has gotten us here. So the matter in court is an entirely different matter, matter yeah. which is pending litigation. This one has raised red flags and people asking questions. Now, what are the things that are immediately triggered? So it would seem to me that if you read the Office of the Special Prosecutor Act and then you combine that with the regulations that govern what they do, mm -hmm. clearly um, their authority and mandate is invoked. And let me first of all summarize what should be happening going forward. Mm -hmm. There's something under the law that is known as um, lifestyle audit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, basically, what that does is to look into um, what monies that you make mm -hmm. as a public officer, how you expend that money on people around you, people who work for you, mm -hmm. and which sources you get them from, whether these are legitimate or illegitimate sources. There are intrusive questions that will be asked mm -hmm. as to establish mm -hmm. what exactly mm -hmm. the, 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 the funds are and where they come from. Okay. But the starting point, first of all, is how does the special prosecutor receive his, um, what do you call it, 
It's matching orders. Yeah, matching orders. Now, if you look at the uh, famous regulation LI-2374, mm -hmm. and um, you go to regulation one, mm -hmm. it says that the office of the special prosecutor may act, A, on the complaint lodged by a person who has knowledge of the commission of corruption or a corruption-related offense. Mm. Then you, you also have B, a complaint lodged by a victim of corruption. Information obtained with a C from an informant or a source of the office. Mm -hmm. D, an investigative journalism report or source. Mm. So if you underline D, the Chronicle broke the story. And a lot of media houses have since run a lot of stories on it. So mm -hmm. that is one of the potential areas that the office may be acting upon. Then you have E, intelligence developed by uh, developed during previous investigations, and it goes on and on. But let me come to regulation one, sub-regulation two, which says the office may, A, Act further to a data mining by an intelligence analyst of the office or any other government intelligence analyst. B um, also talks about initiate an investigation into corruption or a corruption-related offense when facts or circumstances reasonably indicate mm. that investigations may be conducted to prevent or prosecute such criminal activity. And C on its own act on I, a corruption allegation or corruption-related allegation, or II, which is Roman numeral two, reasonable suspicion of the commission of corruption or a corruption-related offense. Mm -hmm. Now, if you put all of these things that I have read together, what basically you can distill from it is that the office of the special prosecutor may either act on the complaint that he has received mm -hmm. or act on its own mm -hmm. based on information that is in the public domain. Good. Now, what then would the office do having uh, received complaints? We are told that over 200 complaints mm -hmm. have thus far been re received from diverse sources. Hey, since Friday. Yeah, that's right. Hey. From either social media uh, platforms that they have or through emails and, and some other formats. The law allows for that. Now, what the special prosecutor's office will be doing, first of all, is to conduct preliminary investigations uh, into whether or not there is a viable case to pursue. Mm -hmm. Now, ordinarily, that's not a matter that they would bring to the attention of the public mm -hmm. um, for, for any reason, but it would seem that we do have a special case on our hands mm -hmm. that it would, it would require that an exception is made mm -hmm. so that there is some update to the public that, yes, we have received some complaints and that using our powers, mm -hmm. we intend to get into this matter. Mm -hmm. Now, first of all, one of the key documents required mm -hmm is the original complaint mm -hmm. that was made to the police mm -hmm. regarding this particular matter. Mm -hmm. The complaint that was made, mm -hmm. they did involve all these five people or some of them. Mm -hmm. How much money mm -hmm. was mentioned in the original complaint yep. to the police? Yep. Who was claimed in that complaint mm. to be the owner of the property? Because if you see you, somebody has stolen something, it must necessarily be property somebody. belonging to someone. Good. before you can say that theft has occurred. Mm -hmm. Now, based upon that, what entries were made by the police? Mm -hmm. And what findings were made by the police? Why is that important? Because you need to, first of all, establish how much is involved. And who owns the money? Who owns the amount? That then of becomes the basis for which if OSP wants to make an investigation, they'll go. Exactly. I get you. Now, mm -hmm. the second layer of that is the charge sheet. Mm -hmm. that ultimately went to court. We're told that there was an original charge sheet mm -hmm. which was subsequently amended. So mm -hmm. an amended charge sheet was filed. Mm -hmm. In other words, they took something first to court mm -hmm. and then with the leave of the court, amended the original one mm -hmm. and took something new to mm -hmm. the court. Mm -hmm. 
Now, what we've seen in the public domain signed is the amended charge sheet. Mm -hmm. And on that charge sheet, we're told that the former minister owned the property in question, uh, properties in question, and that one million US dollars was involved, 300,000 euros was involved, and some other valuables. Mm -hmm. So you would imagine that the office of the special prosecutor will be making a formal request for certified true copies of the charge sheet that mm -hmm. went to court mm -hmm. because of the possibility that what is in the public domain may not may... be accurate. Exactly. So they need an official document based mm -hmm. upon which they, 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 they would act. Then also, one other thing that will be targeted has to do with the assets declared by the minister exactly. when uh, she was um, you And these assets declared are not shared with the public, but they are within the remit of, I think, parliament. No, the Where Auditor they... General. Okay. So exactly. if you look at the uh, provisions of our constitution, the constitution makes, um, uh, what do you call it, makes it a requirement that mm. as a public officer within the remit of Article 286 of the constitution, mm -hmm. you need to declare your assets shortly after coming into office. Mm -hmm. And then also where you are exiting office, you need to make a declaration. Of course, you can update the records mm -hmm. as you go. Mm -hmm. Now, when a matter comes up, which is corruption related or something that creates problems for you or some people around you, mm -hmm. a formal request can be made for the, for the documents. Which then becomes a way of making uh -huh. some determinations. Exactly. So it may go before a court of competent jurisdiction, if you look at 286, um, you know, clause 3A, or before a commission of inquiry, mm -hmm. or before an investigator appointed by the Commissioner for Human Rights and Administrative Justice. So if you look at, you know, um, what do you call it? Um, Article 286, mm -hmm. clause, uh, clause, two, uh, clause 3, actually, um, come to even four. A, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. This is where, for instance, the special prosecutor may make an application to a court of law mm -hmm. and request formally mm. this uh, assets declared by the minister okay. based upon which they, they will proceed. Now, the next logical question will be if they have made sufficient collection of documents relating to this matter, mm -hmm. what next could happen? What can they do with it? Uh -huh. Now, if you look closely at the provisions of the regulations I quoted much earlier, which is the... LI-2374. Exactly. There is an interesting... Um, regulations 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. There are regulations in there which, which empower the Office of the Special Prosecutor to do a lifestyle audit. Okay. And if you go to hmm. um, Form 11 mm -hmm. of that particular regulation, mm -hmm. you will notice that, and there's also a B, which is attached to it, mm. there are very intrusive questions that may be asked of a person mm. that has become target for their investigations. Mm. So, for instance, they can ask you for amount that is held. A, cash in hand. Mm. B, cash, cash in hand in Ghana. Cash at a bank outside Ghana. Mm. Amount held on behalf of a trustee or trustees and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Amount held on your behalf or in trust for you by any other person. Loans or advances received by you. Mm. Amount held on behalf of or as trustee of spouses, partner, or any such relation. And it goes on and on and on. What it does is basically to investigate your background. To know what monies you may have had in the past, what you have now, what you may end tomorrow, okay. what you may be mm -hmm. holding for and on behalf of somebody, and all of that. So the question I have for you, not to stampede you, is mm -hmm. what would they do with all of this? You've already said to me that they can ascertain how much is involved, who owns the amounts, compare this to the person's uh, assets declared, and mm -hmm. then you also do lifestyle audit. Mm -hmm. My question is, so when they, when, when they, when they do this investigation and get these documents. Mm -hmm. What can they do with it? Okay, so there must then be a basis to now invite the minister formally for questioning, grilling, as it, people sometimes call it. So then, based on everything that has been established, 
prima facie case would have been made by the office of the special prosecutor that there's something to investigate. So let's move now into the proper investigative stage. Where would so, she, so so two things? She's mm-hmm. investigating the OS will be investigating unexplained wealth. Yeah. In this case. Uh, yeah, because if for instance, if for instance, if the minister is asked to explain a difference, for instance, between what she declared previously and what is now in the public domain, who owns it, who did not own it. If there are va- variations. As to give the minister, uh, what do you call it, the office of the special prosecutor, cause to go into proper investigation of this matter. What we are saying, therefore, is that they are looking to establish possible wrongdoing, which will form basis for prosecution if the facts support prosecution. That's fair. I, I, I just need to come and make the point. So there's unexplained wealth, right? But there's also illicit wealth from wrong activities which includes the process of corruption. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying that <clears throat> you can get A, but you may not be able to prove B. In a sense that, let's assume the assets declare show that my salary is 10,000 mm-hmm. and all the money I have in my life is 500,000 CDs. Mm-hmm. And then I have um, 1.6 million worth mm-hmm. of assets in my home. Mm-hmm. So that clearly is unexplained wealth. Mm-hmm. But that's just the first leg of the problem. Mm-hmm. The second leg is that that wealth is not explained. So maybe I say people give it to me as a funeral donation. People give it to me as a gift. Mm-hmm. How do you then proceed to... to, to, to I, I think the crime would be if the money I had came from wrong sources. But you can't prove that. That's my no, point. You see, no. So I'm saying you can't... So let me explain. You can't prove that the money I have is unexplained. Yeah. But you can't prove that I got it from wrong sources. No, so there are two different things. Unexplained is not the same as money from illicit. Yes, sources. I know. That's what I'm saying. That the, oh, if you know, prove me, that I have unexplained money, uh-huh. is that a crime? Yes, it is. In this case, there is a declaration that you have made formally to the auditor general, right? That these are the assets that you own. You have been asked to explain how come how you earn your money. You give you provide details. That is form A. If you go to form B, there are other questions that are asked, which questions are very intrusive. And for the benefit of... Now, which is what you... But I, I, I don't want to go... In, I don't want to do procedure. I want to do outcomes. So my, the, what I'm asking this morning is, there are two issues. Unexplained wealth mm-hmm. and then illicit wealth. Mm-hmm. Are you saying that... Let me, let me just... Are, are you saying that unexplained wealth mm-hmm. can be construed to be corruption? Yes. That can even found, you know, money laundering charges. The reason okay. being that, okay. first of all, illicit money, so maybe child trafficking. Or drug trade. R- drug trade. That's explicitly illicit. Exactly. So that is explicitly illicit. So you can deal with that. On its own. On its own, in another way. Yeah. The unexplained is where you have been given an opportunity to explain how you came by some money. Or there is some asset that you are said to have. You cannot explain how you got that asset. Because a form has been given to you to tell us what money you earn, where you earn them from. So the- let, let's play the devil's advocate. Mm-hmm. If I said people give me gifts because of favor, mm-hmm. so my total asset is half a million CDs. Mm-hmm. I have 1.6 million because on my birthday, people brought me gifts. I had a funeral, people brought me donations. And all of those things together have increased the amount of money I have on me. And I've been so busy, I wasn't able to go to the bank. Mm -hmm. What metric will the OSP use to decide whether that explanation is valid or not? So, better. So, you have received gifts from people to celebrate you on your birthday. The law in this country is that where you receive the gift, you would have to pay tax on it, right? Fine. Now, the question is, did you pay taxes on the gift that you have received? I, maybe every year I file my annual tax hold, returns. Hold on. No, I'm coming. You are going. But you're asking me a question. I'm saying that I file my tax returns. Uh-huh. So sometimes it includes the gifts. Other, other times it doesn't. But that doesn't invalidate the fact that I got gifts. So, Bernard, you see, everything is about proof. Mm-hmm. You said that you receive gifts. Yes. A form has been sent to you to explain your wealth. Yes. You are now under so I must mention, an obligation. So I must mention who gave me the gift. Yes, that's right. So you okay. have to detail that, oh... I received X amount of money mm. from Godfrey. So I have to mention the source. Yeah. So you're, you're saying that that explanation mm. has to be, pr- it's, it's a factual process. Oh, yeah, that's right. And if I claim somebody dashed me 100,000 CDs, mm-hmm. you have I to. must mention who the person is and the date they gave it to me. I'm not so sure about the express mentioning of a name, 
But I believe that these are things that... No, because, we are, see, we are coming to... You see, the whole point is about unexplained wealth mm -hmm. based on the income I have mm -hmm. and my formal income sources. Yeah. All right. So my reasoning is that it can be quite tricky mm -hmm. to ascertain what is ex what is an adequate explanation or not. Is there a rubric that the OSP uses to say that even though you earn 500,000 CDs, mm. you got 1.6 million and mm. you claim that some of it came as gifts for funeral and things. Mm -hmm. And yet we are not satisfied with that explanation. No, you see, so it's a, it comes down to a difference between what you have explained and what you have not explained. So let's say, for instance, you were celebrating your 40th birthday, right? Yeah. The City FM decided to give you a car, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then subsequently it was determined that, oh, you have some other vehicles which you own. Yeah. Right? Now, a matter happens. The, the, the OSP is looking at your sources of income. Yeah. They send you a form. Fill it. You okay. fill the form. Yeah. Now, you ignored or you neglected to include some other cars that are in your name. Mm -hmm. Right? If there is a substantial difference or some difference between what you formally declared as your property and those that you did not de de declare. Of course, the, the OSP will proceed against those that you did not declare because in that case, it is to be taking that they did not belong to you. Do you understand? But if you declare something and there's a difference between what you declared and then your income, then there is a suggestion that, ah, these are your formal sources of income. How come there's a difference between the formal sources of income that you have and the value I see. of the assets? So let, if declared? the OSP finds out that half a, a million dollars of what I have, I can't explain what yes. happens next. Uh -huh. So in that case, then there is a prima facie case of unexplained wealth. Or unexplained wealth. Which they can then use to do what? To prosecute you. Can I not say the miracle of God gave me the <laughs> No, it's not a reasonable <laughs> explanation. Miracle is not a... It's not a reasonable explanation. The favor of God. No, it's not a reasonable explanation. So you see, uh, uh, in, in this regard... So wait, I'm coming, I'm pushing it. So, so I have a charge of unexplained wealth of a million. So they will send me to court under which law? So in this case, possible money laundering could be charged. It could, could, could be, could be but money. shouldn't there be a... Uh, you use the word prime fashy. The fact that I have a million doesn't mean I'm doing money laundering. But where did you get it from? That's what I'm saying. So explain it. Explain it. It's people like me and they give me the money. So so you tell, them that, that, tell them that, oh, Godfrey gave me a well, million. I'm saying that to push something. <laughs> uh -huh. If a public office holder says, and I'm not saying this, and listeners, help us, we are not necessarily even saying that this is what the minister would say or not say. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get a layman's understanding of where the law can go, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. If the person says, people give me a gift, mm -hmm. to what extent can the OSP then construe those gifts to be bribes? I'm asking no, this... You see, that's an intelligent... No, no, I'm, I'm coming. Let me, let me, I'll, take it, I'll, take my, I'll take your time. You said mm -hmm. it's unexplained wealth. Mm -hmm. The reason the wealth... It's not explained. It's that it doesn't come through the sources that I have declared. Which means that the minute the OSP is looking for sources which are not righteous mm -hmm. or sources which are not legal. Legal. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Which could include bribes. Yes. Which could include illicit transfer uh -huh. or include monies I have stolen. Uh -huh. But my question is, how does the OSP then proceed, having established I have one million dollars of unexplained wealth, mm -hmm. to decide which possible infraction costs that money? Do you get my point? So that you know that I have one million that I can't explain. Mm -hmm. But you, the OSP, how, how would you, you, can, you also can't explain it. So how do you decide to proceed on illicit uh, transfer or corruption? How do you proceed? Hold on. You said that Godfrey gave you some money, right? I said people gave me gifts. Who are you said you accept. No, who are those people? Some I know, some I don't. No, you, you see, I'm, a, I'm a public figure. No, you can't say that. You but people, don't people send you money that you don't know? No, no, no. But everybody who gives you money, Bernard, you know that this person paid you me see, for I'm, I'm trying like to. I'm trying to say that uh -huh. two things, and this is what, why I'm, I'm playing this devil's advocate. Mm. Not everything that we can accuse a person of is explicitly stated in the law. We may need to do things like code of conduct of public officers if we don't have one to then add to what you've done. So after the work you've done with OSP, where you've laid out the fact that the amount of money belonged to me, but it didn't agree with my sources of income and therefore it's unexplained wealth, mm -hmm. then you can either proceed on two levels. You can proceed on the level of code of conduct of public officers, which, which would obviously include things like how much... But I, no, I think you are going you, to... You, you, no, no, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. 
Come on. Because you are saying there are two things. So when you get the unexplained wealth, yeah. you can then go to mm-hmm. whether it is money from an illicit source, for which then you have either bribery, stealing, or illicit financial flows, mm-hmm. which is stage two. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying that stage one that you've done, which is unexplained wealth, mm-hmm. you can also come to it through the point of code of conduct of a public officer. No, you see, code of conduct is much, it's not, it's it, not. It's smaller? It is, it's, code, these are basically, um, they are administrative tools, right? Are you sure? Oh yeah, code of conduct stuff, they are administrative tools. Not necessarily hard law in the sense of you have done something wrong and therefore I am taking you to court to prosecute you. Mind you, President John Mahama, when he was in office, there was something in, in, in connection with code of conduct, something that they launched in Pedro, if my memory serves me correctly. These are not things that you can, properly speaking, be prosecuted on. But if, if a person breaches the code as a public officer, I don't know if there's a law, a, a bill for the code, because I know some people are working towards having a bill for yeah, code they of conduct. They are working on yeah, so my, my point is that, will Ghana that bill not then include punitive sanctions beyond uh-huh. simply sacking. No, so if it is crystallized into an act, it's an entirely different uh-huh. Which is where I'm coming from. So uh-huh. we are talking about what exists now. Uh-huh. Yes. You are saying that as of now, we don't have there that. is no law, mm-hmm. even if there's a code, it's not a law. Mm-hmm. So you cannot proceed criminally on a code. No, no, no. You can only proceed administratively. Yes. But if it becomes a law, mm-hmm. then you can ground, because what I'm trying to say to you is that mm-hmm. what this uh, anti are saying is that mm-hmm. you can prove a list, uh, unexplained wealth mm-hmm. But to link it to an illicit activity is the bigger challenge. Hold on. You see, that's why I was trying to say that when you cannot explain it, there is a presumption. There's something known as reverse burden. Mm -hmm. In normal times, Mm -hmm. the law is that he who alleges must prove. In normal times. So if the state says that you, Bernard, you have done something wrong, Mm -hmm. it is the the obligation Mm -hmm. of the state Mm -hmm. to prove that, Bernard, you did A, B, C, D wrong. I get you. Right? However, there are special cases created by law. Mm-hmm. The unexplained thing is one of them. Mm-hmm. Where a presumption oh. is made that, oh, you... So once you can explain it, so that the thing is now on you. Yeah, that's right. So once the special prosecutor says that you, Bernard, you mm-hmm. got this money from illicit sources, the burden... Or unexplained sources. Yeah, that's right. Unexplained sources. Yeah, that's right. The burden is on you to prove that, oh... I have thought about this matter. In fact, on the 15th day of, you know, January, Akoto brought me 2,000 Ghana cities in an envelope. A day later, Nathan brought me 10,000 Ghana cities. Uh, two weeks I later... I hope you are prophetic. You are speaking, <laughs> <are> speaking prophetically. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> because are talking. I want to receive it, but I don't know if you are just talking. My example, you had the prophetic. <laughs> so keep mentioning. Uh-huh. And then Sky also brought... Yeah, no, no, no. I, I was saying, oh, Bernard, you know, I have built a new house for yes. you at, you know, yes. Trazaco. Yes. So, so let's go. I'm giving you... You understand? Aha. <laughs> uh-huh. And when you finish with all of that, yeah. that, it is not your word that is enough. Okay. You have to call Akoto. They have to call Goffred. They Did have you to actually call, send him those things. Uh huh. To actually audit and satisfy themselves, and for that matter, the court, mm. that indeed the claims that you have made, hey. which you have deposed to, are actually factual in fact, and therefore in law. Because it could have been that Goffred is doing something illicit that he shouldn't be doing, and this man is doing something illicit, or maybe I'm doing something illicit. So that if it is established that, ah, you actually even knew that Goffred was into an illicit business. This man, illicit business. I am also in, into an illicit business. You knew that, and yet you even received the money. Then the question now becomes, did you this honestly receive uh, money? Which is why some of the people in the five have even charged for receiving. Exactly, dishonestly receiving. So mm. you, you, you were aware, you mm. knew that mm. this money was not coming from a genuine source, mm. and yet you received it anyway. But this is a very controversial point you've made, which I think I want other lawyers to confirm. Sky is saying that in regular times, the person who alleges proofs, but in cases of unexplained wealth, once it is established that <clears throat> the wealth you have cannot be explained, the onus is on you. Yes. If the accused, yes. if you go to, through... to, to explain your unexplained wealth, so the OSP is just basically establishing that there's a certain amount that you cannot, that you have to explain. Yes. Once you are unable to explain it, mm-hmm. the burden falls on you, the the owner yeah. of the wealth. Yeah. It's known as reverse burden. And does this unexplained what apply to public officers or both public and private officers? Pu- private and public. But if and you are saying we don't even need necessarily to establish an illicit 
source of the funds. Once I can't explain it, I have a burden to prove that I got the money from my, from my legitimate source. But why are you struggling to explain money that you got legitimately? Yeah, I brought the miracle dimension. You didn't accept <laughs> it. Yeah, so, 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 so you're saying that if the money I have is legitimate, I should be able to explain it. Yeah. Uh, is, so once I can't explain it, it then, is presumed illegitimate. Yeah. Which is why okay, I... Okay, that's a very important yeah, point. No, but you, if you remember, when I was yeah. explaining, I'm saying, mm. that's why I said we have to distinguish between earning and having. 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 Mm. Which is what the OSP mm. will ask you. Mm. Mm. How did you earn to have? Mm. Mm. But you can have without earning. So you explain how you had it, here. which is the gift angle. So you will explain that have. Now, okay, there are questions I'm, I'm again pushing. The, so if the person then lifts the veil and mentions that people give them the gift, mm -hmm. I got money from this person, that person or the other. Can, will the OSP say, okay, that's enough. So the money you got, you explain it. Or he will now go and say, okay, you who gave him the money? Where did you get it from? Uh, so that's what I said. Oh, why did you give it to him? Uh, so that's what I said. That if he mentions Nathan, Nathan then the OSP will invite Nathan for questions. But Nathan is a rich man. It, 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 it doesn't matter that he's a rich man. There will be questions as to the reason behind He him. likes me. Is there a trace of some work that you did Comfort he did for you? Wonderful. There yeah. are all kinds of... I, I think you are not making... So you're saying that mm. I have to explain the wealth. Yes. So even if I mention that I got the money from all these people... Mm -hmm. The people who gave me the money can also then be asked how they gave me the yeah, money. Yeah, that's right. Why? Then we can also establish the relationship between yeah, us. Exactly. So, so if for I'm the public officer mm -hmm. who gave him a contract, mm -hmm. and then he came to give me a gift of a million, yeah. then we can say, how are you giving me a gift of a million exactly. when he's giving you a contract just a year exactly. before? Then you can establish the link. Uh -huh. I think you are making sense to me now. I was just pushing the question to, to get <laughs> if, it. Ben, if you go through okay. the Anti-Money uh, Laundering Act Thank 2020, mm -hmm. Section uh, 1, mm. Uh, sub three mm. says where a person under investigation. So section one has to do with money laundering. Mm. Now it says where a person under investigation for money laundering mm. is in possession or control of property, mm -hmm. which the person cannot account for mm -hmm. and which is disproportionate to the income of that person from known sources. Known sources. That person shall be deemed to have committed an offense under subsection two. Mm. Which is, of course, it talks about money laundering. So the, the other question is that, does the OSP regularly do these things or they wait for a, a complaint or they wait? Because I'm saying this because mm. some people can also see this as a possible witch hunting thing, right? So somebody sitting in somewhere who's a very known critic of the government and then the OSP can then proceed and say, by the way, you cry, you have two houses in Trasak, how did you get it? Mm. Now, my, my question is, when I was born, they invested. Uh -huh. And also, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, I'm not saying this OSP will do something like this. I, I'm just trying to look at the parameters under which they can proceed. You said a publication, a journalistic evidence, some mm -hmm. data mining. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like there, there has to be some gotcha. trigger. Oh, yeah. No because, yeah. you see, if there's no trigger, mm -hmm. it can become... It's latent. Yes. So if, if, if there's no trigger, like if a journalist has done a story mm. or there's a discussion that probably going about somebody mm. or there's a, a contract involving somebody or the person is doing a project for government mm -hmm. or the person's name has come up in a special news item, mm -hmm. I can see cause. But I can I can also see where a very bad OSP, because don't mind you, the OSP is appointed by the president, mm -hmm. okay, can decide to persecute the president's opponents. This is hypothetical. Okay. On the basis of... On the basis of we don't like the person because no, no. Imani is always criticizing so the government. See, I'm, yeah. I'm coming home. Okay. You see, we are talking about institutions and what sets them up and how the people who manage the institutions will use their powers. Yeah. So we pray that the people who run the institutions are good. They are solid. Mm -hmm. Kisi Jabin, great. But you will not always have Kisi Jabin. Just like you can have somebody who... Do you get me? So is the, yeah, but is the organization's ally mm. conk enough to prevent a bad person who holds it from using it to do bad things? That's the question I'm asking you. So, if if I'm a lawyer mm -hmm. and the the scope of the act mm -hmm. and the authority of the uh, special prosecutor is not properly involved, you go to court and quash whatever they are doing. Mm -hmm. But once they come into the full remit of the provisions I've read to you, mm -hmm. has there been some complaint made? Mm. Has there been a publication? Has there been some data mining and all of these things mm. as to lead the mm. Office of the Special Prosecutor to come to the conclusion that, oh, mm. 
there's some reasonable suspicion that something wrong mm -hmm. has been done in this particular area. Let me dig into it. Mm. If there is no basis to initiate an investigation, okay. you cannot... Another question. Let, let me Can just OSP some... work whilst police is also working at the same time? I'm asking this because of parallel investigations. Mm. So we know that in this particular matter, the police are looking at a specific case of theft. Yeah. But assuming the police felt that they wanted to go into this illicit wealth, it, sorry, it, it, uh, unexplained well, mm. which I believe the police have the right to. Do they not? No, I don't. Well, I don't that, think that's that. why I made well, the much of specific have, state I institutions. Don't the that, police that, don't that, have see, This would be matters for the FIC, Yoko, even the BOG to a point. If Yoko they want to, but that's a stretch. It's an organized crime. Uh, yeah, so, 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 let's let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's do this well. Yoko, OSP, CID, mm. FIC. Let's just do a basic understanding of their difference. I know you can go into all the details. So people know, you are saying Iyoko, Economic and Organized Crimes Unit, they are into a syndicated crime. Yeah, right. So it must involve a network. Yeah. So that's Iyoko. Mm -hmm. Now, police is all crimes. Yeah, all crimes, yeah. And the CID investigates. Mm -hmm. Good. So OSP is... Uh, corruption and corruption. Corruption and corruption related... Offenses. As it pertains to politically exposed people. Yes, largely, yes. Good. Mm -hmm. What about Shiraj? Should I deal with human rights violations and administrative breaches? So what about FIC? FIC, that's Financial Intelligence yes. Center. So for instance, they deal with suspicious transactions. With, uh, exactly, with the banks. And then deposit... Uh, so FIC can assist Yoko, can assist mm -hmm. uh, OSP, mm -hmm. can assist police, can assist Raj. Yes. So they are more technical. Mm -hmm. Good. So if it's a syndicate, then it's Yoko. Yoko, yeah. If it's... An Politically exposed person and corruption is OSP. Related, yeah. If it's any other thing, it's police CID. Generally, yeah, that's a general jurisdiction, criminal jurisdiction of the police. All right. I think you've done a good job. Let's read some comments on the questions we asked. And by the way, the second question you haven't answered, though. Question. The ministries, now that the minister is being sought to be replaced, mm -hmm. maybe this is a second question for a different day, but I okay. still feel I need some information on that. Do you think the Ministry of Sanitation has justified its existence? No. Do you think the Ministry of Railway has just its existence? No. Do you think the Ministry of Aviation has just its existence? No. Wonderful. Let's take let, 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 just... let, let, let's, let's read some comments ah. and I'll come back to you. Okay. Nathan, help All me. All right. Uh, Eben says, let's, uh, let's not the amount distract us from the fact that the house holds, the house, the house help. help, sorry, acted in a criminal manner. It says, we need to know who they worked with and how they got those properties and cash out of the house. Well, they didn't get the property out of the house. Mm. They could have used the same plan to kill... Uh, JB Dan Kwaedu. Okay, that's his allegation. But there's a question that has not been answered. <laughs> <laughs> Why did A2? A2. 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 So, A2. listeners, A1 is the 18 year old. Yes. A2 is the 30 year, year old. old. A3 is the current boyfriend of A1. Malik. The, A4 the is seven, the father eight. of A1. Yes. A5 is the former boyfriend of A1. Mm. In the cheat you read, A2, which is the second woman, 30 year old, Send some money to A5. That matter, we need to investigate it. <laughs> the police will give us. Let's <laughs> go. How does A2 be sending money to A5? And the money A5 gets is more than the money A3 gets. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a scandalous matter that you are, you are deciding not to, to overlook. <laughs> anyway, that's the end of service benefit. <laughs> All <laughs> 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 right, let's go. All right, this one. Mm. Yes, not to sound or condone corruption, but logic. someone made statements about making a million dollars and was made to resign. Now, someone has that amount as a public servant in their home, and the person is being treated with kid gloves. He okay. says the system never balanced. John Sadobo in life says God has several ways of exposing the rot in the system. All right. This one says, In the instance I'm being queried to confirm giving money as a gift to a substance. To a, sorry, to a suspect. What am I doing? Will the SP now investigate me, the giver, to validate my source of yeah. income? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. my income cannot make me have that quantum of money I have given as a gift. Yes. Yeah, so Davis from Oboasi yeah. is asking. Mm -hmm. This one says, Sianyo uh, in UG says, what Sky is attempting to convey mm -hmm. is that the legitimacy of wealth, mm -hmm. which has been acquired through legal means, mm -hmm. but lacks a clear explanation of its source, raises doubts. Yes, sir. It is essential to concentrate on valid arguments in a respectful manner at this point. Says Bernard has to behave. No, I am, I am, I am trying to use questioning 
to get meaning. And I have a comment that actually agrees with Sky. So let's read this. Ben, good morning. Morning. Uh, my thoughts on the DAPA case, the combined effect of Section 13 and Section 55 of Anti-Money Laundering Act 2020, Act 1044, clothe the law enforcement agencies with the powers to investigate illicit enrichment, except that the law limited the provision to a situation when the person is under investigation for money laundering. Mm -hmm. Now, if the OSP should put the minister under investigation for corruption, which is a predictive offense of money laundering, and money laundering, he can invoke the Anti-Money Laundering Act to go into the matter. Fortunately, the law didn't say this can only be done when the person has been convicted for money laundering. It says when a person is under investigation. Mm -hmm. Remember, those provisions are for LEAs. I don't know what LEA is. Law enforcement agencies as the FIC is not an investigative body. Mm -hmm. So fine. The law says that once the person cannot explain the mm -hmm. source of wealth and disproportionate to his income, it should be assumed mm -hmm. that the person has committed a money laundering offense. Yeah. Now, it then goes on to point me to um, the AML law, mm -hmm. AML Act 2020, Act 1044, uh, Section 55.3. Mm -hmm. In a trial for an offense under subsection 3, Oh, sorry, in a, in, a, in a trial for an offense under subsection 3 of section 1, the burden of persuasion is on the party claiming that the property in the possession of that party is not proceeds of unlawful activity. Which, which is what you were saying. saying that yeah. You have to prove. But he's saying that this has to come under... The principle is the reverse person. Yes, that that's what he's saying. Yeah. Then somebody also gives me something else, which also again seems to agree. Another lawyer, he says... So, if we take section one three, and this is the Which again, is that? Um, give me a minute, Samuel. Uh, oh gosh, a picture. So, if if you take section one three of AML, the same act, mm -hmm. it says that um, I, I, I there is a presumption of guilt mm -hmm. until a person can explain their wealth. Yeah, so yeah. It, it points me to section one three. Mm -hmm. So money laundering again is the same thing this guy said, where when a person an investigation for money laundering is in possession or control of a property which the person cannot account for and which is disproportionate to his income or that person for known sources, that person shall be deemed to have committed an offense and a subsection two. So same, so two different legal sources. But there are a couple more. Uh, this one says, Bernard, mm -hmm. the OSP can look into the matter but cannot charge for unexplained wealth in court without proving that the source of the wealth are from illicit activities. Okay, so this person is not a lawyer. Once you have not explained it, then there's a problem. All right. Um, more people are commenting, Bernard, my worry about this matter is that if over one million got stolen over a period of four months without you knowing, imagine how much was the entire money that was in the house. That's a question a lot of people have asked. So. Yep. Uh, ben from Ataiko is asking whether Same or question too. Mm -hmm. the ministers pay tax to the GRE. Mark from Ashie, yes, is asking the, the same, same, same question. Same really. question. You know, that Charlie, probably there's a lot more. Mm. Another one, the story more than anything else exposes the sordid level of depravity and obscene perversion in our society. Somebody agrees to accept without questioning $70,000 from a child of 18. She probably was even younger at the time without questioning and handed over to her the keys to the house. That's the new house they bought. Mm -hmm. She was able to pay cash amount of 80,000 CDs to buy a car, also without questioning. Mm -hmm. Then she spent over 100,000 Ghana CDs to pay for her rent in advance. Oh, none of no these questions. folks bothered to ask where she got the money from. And even if they did ask, they yeah, must have the been satisfied with the explanation from a minor as to how she can come to such money. And Maybe oh, she used the proxy. Yes, and so we don't know this. And oh, the father who knew her young daughter and how she was, admitted receiving 50,000 from her now 18 year old daughter so this is comments people are, but she first point is that it doesn't necessarily have to be that girl herself giving the mm. money which is why the police have have arrested accomplices yes. some of who are 30 year old men who are mm. probably able to then use the money, money to buy so we shouldn't things. assume that the 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 lady did the transactions herself we shouldn't make that assumption. Here are more of your comments on the issue. All right. This one says, all what Godfrey is saying is, it's not as though our institution for these activities don't know, but they are and can't do it because they've been put in the pocket of politicians. If we don't check the powers vested in politicians and, the, and as such, uh, the president and, uh, and the president, we won't go anywhere. Here in Finland last year, the prime minister was suspected to have spent some 800 euros or more 
on breakfast. Hmm. The speed with which the police moved into action was just marvelous. Hmm. Let's delink our institutions from our politicians. Hmm. Isaac from Helsinki hmm. sent that. Are, are you following the Sky, uh, the Nicola Sturgeon story? In the UK? Yes. Uh, you know, even that a number of MPs were jailed um, mm. a couple of years ago, a number of years ago. For the expenses. Uh, for expenses that they accounted, false accounting of, of yeah. what exactly were yeah. spending. And these were not like millions of, uh, you know, hundreds these were of pounds. A few thousands and yeah. hundreds of, okay. of, of, of pounds. Mm. So in other jurisdictions, you don't mention millions. And these are jurisdictions who give us money. Yeah, these are. To do projects. That's not to say that they don't engage in corruption. Yeah, but at least there's a standard they uphold. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right, um, this one says, Bernard and Co., the scandal could have been avoided had the minister handed the whole case to her husband, a pseudo-owner of the stolen funds. Okay, he seems to think that it was handled wrongly. Just I don't No, actually, me. see, a, a quick point on that. If the system works the way it's supposed to work, Political. being handed over to the husband or not... Political. The police. But, but what is this texter's motive for sending this? No, message? hold on, Bernard. Even if, uh, yeah, you let's 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 say he has a bright idea. <laughs> he has a bright idea, right? The as soon as you report this, the police will. Uh, you've lost one point six million. The police should notify somebody yeah. else to check that. Ah, who is this person? Who is this person? How come this person has in excess of a million dollars at home in cash? Complaining, taking And by the way, how did the story get to the public domain? I what? also think that. We need to comment whoever leaked the story. No, it was in court. It was in court. Yeah, but we don't know if the journalist was in court. Yes, the 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 Friday story was a court report. Okay. You know, the Chronicle has a very strong presence at in the courts. courts. Okay. Yes, another one. Good morning. I think this government is really taking the Ghanaian for granted. Also, the president himself would have launched an investigation into this. Take, for example, the party gate scandal. Boris Johnson had to step down after the privilege committee carried out investigation. This was not because people were angry that the prime minister party, but because there was court possible breaches of COVID rules, unquote, during a Christmas gathering at Conservative Party headquarters in 2020, unquote, a time when everybody had been asked to observe these rules. I think she will still be investigated. I think she should still be investigated even though she's resigned. This is from Vera in Glasgow. <coughs> okay. Um, FWA says, what's the proof that all the money was earned during her term alone? She's married. Doesn't her husband's wealth also count for something? The president can't condemn her until... There has been an investigation and proof provided. I think he's allowed to be neutral because for me, I think his response was in reference to what she wrote. And that's fair. Okay? okay. I don't necessarily support her or otherwise, but innocent until proven guilty, public or private. That's Ifra's message. Mm. Um, this one says, my biggest disappointment in all this is the president. The tone of his letter is very disappointing. No investigation announced, no seriousness attached to it. The president and those around him are not measuring the pulse of the country. They are not reading the emotions of Ghanaians at all. To say I'm disappointed in the raw deal we are getting from this government would be an understatement. Hey, you call us fellow Ghanaians and do this to us? Is the president a Ghanaian? Eric from Dansoman is asking. Eric with Diyaw and Ope with Pa. Eric with Diyaw. Pa, 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 pa. <laughs> okay, more uh, comments. Uh, Charles says, the corruption problem is bigger than politicians. Mm. In my own professional association, our president spends 13,000 CDs on getting a legal opinion. When we asked of the document, he said he would not share with us, the members. <laughs> and you have left him there. <clears throat> Austin from so, Kofton says... Would she have resigned if the money issue had not popped up? That's his question. Cardinal in Tamale says, My worry is that there's no blame on the delinquent teenagers not supporting Abna Dapawa. Let's think about the impact on... No, teenager. Because yes, they, they the teenager. rest are all adults. 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 Okay, says so that we should have a rethink on worker no. boss relations and It's child not even just child people. because there are 30 year olds involved. They're even the father of the girl <coughs> receiving yeah. the money. So... so, so the issue of moral decadence doesn't rest with politicians. Yes. And the other truth is that that matter is already in court. court yes. So that one, it happens every time. People mm -hmm. steal and they attend to court. But we are talking about a public officer in a ministry that is supposedly new. And again, with even some can even say questionable achievements because that ministry is new and the, the whole sanitation Still. problem, we're not sure if we've solved it. Uh, you get it? So I don't know. The president promised that Accra will be the cleanest city in Africa by end of his term. It's not even the cleanest city in Ghana. Do you get me? So it's it's a big question. And then a lot of these ministries, we don't know. If you look at the budget for these ministries, you really need a sanitation ministry. <laughs> you understand? 
know. <laughs> I'm not saying scientists is not important. No, 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 it's not that right, though. And the Me, question I'm is... I'm just saying, in my you, head, I'm running some analysis in my head that I cannot have tolerate. Have justified? <laughs> and which is why I roped in the real way. Is it because we are discussing... There are so many layers of this. Look, guys, for me, for me, right, even the... the 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 And this is a very bizarre angle, right? She needed a man to help her use the money. Because if you look at all that she did with the money, the person who stole the money, the A1, it had to go through A4, A3. They call it first accused. Second. Yes, the first accused. Yes, in a sense that this is an 18-year-old person. We don't know if the person was 18 before they stole the money. And they needed some... And the boyfriend is a very loose term. So it could be a male accomplice. May not necessarily have any relationship with the, the person. person yeah. But the kinds of things the person did with the money and all of that in cash, you know, that which goes back to the point you make. In a country which is supposed to be in a period of economic downturn where a lot of people are broke, somebody, people are buying buildings for $70,000 in cash. Mm-hmm. In cash. Mm-hmm. Right? People and, are buying and so, so why wouldn't GRA be struggling to get money. Because we are talking about Ghana being one of the countries with a low level of taxation. If you look at the number of transactions involved in what the charge sheet says, renting stores in Tamale, buying a three-bedroom house in Tamale, buying, build, a, car. buying a car, building a three-bedroom house in Amra here. There was one house they bought for $70,000. So the question is, even the tax authorities, did they get any benefit or wind of any of these things? These are all questions you must ask, which is why having a public officer have cash. Because you see, the digital agenda is premised on the fact that we can trace everything. And as soon as it is digital, we don't even need to worry to find out where the money went. But once it's physical, you carry $70,000, go and give it to somebody in Tamale or 100,000 CDs in cash. The state doesn't benefit. All right? And so we are in an economic downturn looking for IMF money. Yet people are building houses and selling it I'm told there are lands in Accra over a million dollars. And yet, AMA can't raise enough money to clean our gutters. There's a problem. The streets that are even leading to some of these million dollar houses <laughs> are full of potholes. Okay, so we should also ask ourselves as Ghanaians that the way we go about business, are we even justified when we come and say we need new roads? Because if you go to all the houses being sold, the transactions being done, Sky, in most advanced countries, any transaction of a certain amount goes through a system, a tax is paid. And the, the center collects the money. But the money is with private people. So you are not going to get good roads. You're not going to get... And, and it's not justifying the lack of social service. But the ease with which somebody can buy a $70,000 house in cash. So you worry all of us. You understand? With all the investments in digitalization, this morning, the vice president is saying that even babies will get... Uh, uh, Ghana, Nasna, cash. Ghana cash. Maybe we should strengthen the, the, the tax authorities a bit more. Because I'm sure if you ask the GRA boss where he thinks he can get more money. He have a few ideas. When they started going to the retail shops to physically stamp the receipts, they increased revenue by hundreds of percentages. So when something is happening in an economy where you can go and rent a house in advance and pay cash, it's, it's a problem, Sky. Which, which is why the issue. last time we had this conversation, I spoke to you about... Selling cars, selling houses, all in cash. About hey, how hey, if hey, no 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 it's, see, a, it's an issue. Let me t- let me tell you something, Sky. So hold on. You, what would you? I, no, no, I, I'm, I'm saying that can't you. there be a law that you should not transactions of a certain threshold should go through the system? Because now you have see Sky. I think between Momo, mm-hmm. Gips, and then bank account. You see, the government can trace. Why does the government come out to tell you that Momo is overtaking bank checks? Because they can. They, all the records are Electronic there. Electronic trail. All right, so that they can they can trace the amount of money spent on buying houses electronically. I don't think you can you can be in the in Norway or UK or Scandinavia and carry seventy thousand dollars to go and buy a house. So let me tell you something. It can't happen. <laughs> if you look at our anti-money laundering legislations, and then the accompanying regulations, mm. and then all these Basel protocols that we have signed, there are obligations really imposed by law already. On lawyers, people who rent houses, uh-huh. people who sell houses, people, bankers, all these people. Mm. So that if, as a landlord, someone comes, says, wants to buy a house, mm-hmm. and the person comes with a million dollars in cash, mm. 
the law imposes an obligation on you, the person receiving the money, the landlord, to immediately call the police. Not even or, a bank. No, no, yeah, no. Police the money, yeah, because it's money you are receiving cash. To notify the authorities that, oh, there's this potential, you know, tenant or... Uh, yeah, Mr. Mitomi died. Ah, you see? That's my point. They will not agree. That, that law is not the right way to do it. Oh? You see, that is how it should be done. Because in the UK, mm. or in these other advanced jurisdictions, mm. you can't carry $1 million in cash and say you are going to buy it. I will say go and pay it in my bank. You see, oh? the moment you even go... And, and, they are making calls. Issues. That's what I'm saying. So I, if I'm selling a car, uh -huh. and I'm selling for 100,000 CDs, uh -huh. I won't collect 100,000 from you. I'll say, pay yes, my account is going to pay. Aha, you see. By that's, the, what, that's what you're supposed by to do, right? By, yes, that's what you're supposed to do. But there are two things here. Yeah. First, you, the person buying the car, yeah. you maybe have questionable sources of income. Uh -huh. So you don't want the system to know uh, that you have that much money you are spending on a car. Because if you have, say, $100,000 to, to, to spend on a Lamborghini or something mm. like that, how did you get it? Now, the reverse of that is you, the person who... Whose product they are buying or whose uh, whose car they are buying? Yes, uh -huh. You don't want to pay gift tax. Uh, what do you call it? Income tax or what? The assets. Uh, this is a technical name for mm -hmm. it. You are selling off your assets. When you sell it, uh, you need to pay tax on it, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't want the system to know that you are. Uh, so of both it. of us are criminals. Uh -huh. So the two of us are acting like we have a gentleman's agreement. Okay, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. So fine, the law as it exists depends on my. Sense of duty, duty mm -hmm. to solve. Yeah. That's fifty percent. But can they say that beyond a certain threshold, transactions should not be done in cash uh -huh. by law? Because I am saying that the way in which this money stolen will be useless to the girl who stole the mm -hmm. money will be that almost everything she wants to do with the money at once, it will involve a bank. Uh -huh. So, so, yes. so you see, the purpose of the banks is mm -hmm. also a legal purpose that anything she wants to do about five thousand dollars. You have to use a bank. She has to use a bank. If we said that, mm -hmm. then it will mean that she can't spend the money. Uh -huh, you see, the, so, the, so the way to deal with that, the way to deal with that, mm -hmm. is where, first of all, registration. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's say you bought a car for 100,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm. And it did not go through the system. Mm -hmm. You exchange the money cash. If you are going to register that car in your name mm -hmm. or you are going to change ownership of the car mm -hmm. into your name. Mm -hmm. Ideally, the requirement should be that you should provide proof of how the you payment was made. Mm. So the institution can then become... Uh -huh. So that if you go to the DVLA with your forms that, oh, this is the car that I bought. I want to register it in my name. Mm -hmm. Ideally, they should be able to ask you. They should be able to ask out oh, this car. That, the value of the car is X, B, mm -hmm. A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. How did you pay for it? You understand? All we do normally send to them is the uh, import. Yeah, the import, import duty. exactly. You understand? What you are saying, by what you are saying, it mm -hmm. is not enough. Yeah. There should be an additional layer of, okay, how did you pay for it? You would, you would make that declaration. So it's on form. So when another matter happens tomorrow, then it is triggered. It is latent. Yeah. But the moment another matter happens tomorrow, they can pick it up and say, okay. No, I, I, I actually think that one way of reducing corruption is to digitalize the economy. And let, let, this digitalization is very important. It shouldn't be seen from a, politi a partisan political perspective. If done properly, uh -huh. there's no uh -huh. way... There's uh -huh. no the way, one I was looking yes. for is capital gain. Yes. Charlie, thank yes. you so much. Yes. Sir, there's, no way, there's no way you can spend certain amounts of money in a lot of the countries we admire mm -hmm. in cash. <laughs> I go to a shop in UK and I'm holding 50 pounds and they're having nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where did you get the 50 pounds? I said, oh, I'm from Ghana. And when I was coming to Ghana, are you okay? Okay, I'll say fine. Because most of the times it's 20 pounds, 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. If you hold a yeah, 50 yeah, pound yeah. note, yeah, they yeah. actually even yeah. sniff it to be sure it's not... It has, <laughs> no, because... Uh, they, are, they assume that it's people who are into drugs Money and things drinks. who have those. Oh, yeah, I, I experienced it once. Right, I 50 remember, pounds. Yeah. And here you can have a million, $70,000 house cash in Ghana. Your Ghana yeah. must go. You see, yeah, Ghana must go. And <laughs> we are doing wrong, the wrong thing. Hmm. The seller is trying to avoid taxes. The buyer is also trying to avoid... Uh, what do you call it? You know, uh, questions about how he got the money. 
So once there's that agreement between the buyer and the seller, the state is screwed. Forgive me. And the state has to have interest in people wanting to... You see, there's always pay tax, pay tax, pay tax. And I feel like there are things they can do to make it... To compel people to pay the tax. Ah, so if, they, case, if they will apply it fairly. Mm -hmm. So in this mm -hmm. case, yeah, this in this case, case if you buy a $100 million, what do you call it? A million dollars. Let's say thousand, hundred thousand dollars So if you go to the land registry, people, yeah. uh, you see, there be, they, ideally, mm -hmm. there should be questions about, okay, you bought this house for how much? Mm -hmm. How did you pay for it? Is uh -huh. there evidence of payment? Where's the bank The transfer? bank transaction. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You see, so when you tighten the loopholes Thank like you. that, but the problem is that a good number of the people who are into this space we are talking about are also in influential positions. So then the impetus to even implement it. It's, it's <laughs> no, it's serious. So for me, see, when government <clears throat> comes to say that people should have confidence in the system, they have to use this as a case study. Because to have cash transactions of this amount, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, there are possibly more things that if the that we don't know. Because if you look at, if you add how much they spent, Versus how much they stole, which means there's a lot of the money that they were keeping. Mm -hmm. You get because if you look at how much they spent, it wasn't up to even half of what they took. And yeah. somewhere I think in the uh, forty thousand dollars was retrieved. Yeah, from cash on them. That's what I'm saying. That. So, the, but the, yeah, but it still means that the money could be somewhere that we don't know, yeah. or for other things that they haven't confessed. Mm -hmm. Because a million plus three hundred thousand, if you add up everything that they say they've done, yeah. it's not up to even forty percent of what they took. Yeah. Right, and so, and that money's there somewhere. That money could have been the bank any interest. All right. So sometimes we don't see the link between what we allow in our society and what happens in the overall economy. And this is a period where the economy was broke. It is unbelievable. You know, I feel that GRE needs to make a strong case for reducing cash in the system. That's the only way they can make yeah, their revenue. Yeah, but revenues. you see, the, the fact is also that if the system has taken so much pummeling mm -hmm. as a result of government's irresponsibility, mm -hmm. And how they have handled the economy. Yeah. Right? People yeah. keep their money at home. Now, you should ask yourself. Let's even assume that the minister didn't get the money from questionable sources. If it's her own money. Let's assume that it is for the husband and she herself. Mm -hmm. And that at the time, again, in other jurisdictions, questions will arise. Whether there was insider knowledge that she had. Mm -hmm. That, oh, the economy was so bad. The dollar was going to perform poorly. The city. The city was going to perform poorly. Mm -hmm. So instead of going to put your money in the bank, the best thing you do is to buy dollars. Is to buy dollars and keep it at home. So yes. In, yeah, you see, so in other jurisdictions, so for instance, that you are can come in. Uh -huh, you are a member of a certain board. And then you are also a member of parliament, or maybe in some influential position. Then while you are dealing with a matter having to do with some transaction. You know that the economy is going to get into a certain situation. Exactly. So you take an action. Which is preemptive. Inside that trading, for instance. You call your, your agent and say, hey, Charlie, this thing is going to happen. So, cash out. Uh -huh, sell, cash out. Sell all the, the... If it emerges subsequently that, oh, you became aware, you took steps to head your bet or to actually protect uh, oh, your financial... that be illegal? Yes, it is. In other jurisdictions, uh, you are getting... No, let me have to explain that way. Because if, if I am an economic agent who has property, let's assume I have farms, mm -hmm. and I decide to sell the farms because of privileged information I have... Mm. Until you can prove that that action will affect the economy negatively, it's not a wrong thing. The privileged information. How did you get it? How did you get it? Okay, so so are you saying that if somebody is on say MPC, national? See, see, let, let's be careful here. Mm -hmm. If the person's action is based, if, if the person's prescription, for example, if I'm a member of MPC, mm -hmm. and I prescribe a certain economic action mm -hmm. which I knew will benefit me, mm -hmm. that's wrong. If by reason of superior knowledge mm -hmm. of being on MPC. I know certain things that are happening, and I take a personal economic decision. No, you see, I'm not sure how that is. No, an no, offense. You see, there's a, there's, here's a catch. A Have you used your person, your your official position, to personally enrich yourself? Okay. Once that can be established, so you got to know that oh, You're about this, to change this law. Uh -huh. It's not going to work well for you. So quickly you die, you you divest your interest. Mm -hmm. What it means is that by reason of your occupation of this position, you got privileged information and you used it to economically enrich yourself. But so if I'm on a parliamentary committee uh -huh. and we have an in-camera hearing with the Minister of Finance and the Governor of the Bank of Ghana, uh -huh. and then this is hypothetical, they uh -huh. say, when, I, when we look at portfolio inflows, uh -huh. we feel like the economy is going to have a difficulty with currency in the next three months. Uh -huh. 
and therefore we are working with all our agents to improve this, 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 this. Mm -hmm. Now you are saying I'm a member of the committee. Mm -hmm. I hear this and I go and sell all my CDs and buy dollars. Yeah. You are saying I've committed a crime. Yeah, that's yeah, right. ideally, yeah which is which is right. which is where which law is that? No, it's not about the law. You spoke about no. I'm just trying to get. It no, is not. I cannot immediately. See, it is not even yeah. about the law. What is that? You about? See, it is about the your understanding of the rule and the position that you okay. occupy okay. and what comes with it. You cannot behave like me. Mm. You see, because there, there, there is. It, it comes with the position that you will have access to privileged information. Mm -hmm. It is expected that you do not abuse it. By virtue of ways, it is not even a matter of the law. Mm -hmm. It is so if inherent I so, so, in the so, so, position that you so, hold. So I'm coming. You know, I'm using an MP as an example. The MP has various business interests, mm -hmm. so which you would have declared. Yes, and then you're saying which that. That's why you have to so, declare. So, 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 I, so hold on, no. Mm -hmm. So that conflict of interest, which then leads to insider knowledge. Mm -hmm. You're saying once I know that something's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, why? Okay, the two things. Why don't I declare my interests? And then they say, okay, let's say I'm on a committee. I'm coming to be on a committee. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, me, I do Forex business. Mm -hmm. So even though I'm a member of the parliamentary committee, this is all hypothetical. Mm -hmm. If the governor comes to meet the committee, mm -hmm. says, maybe I should declare my interest before he comes. Mm -hmm. And say, me, no. This is the business my wife does. Mm -hmm. So if, maybe let me recruit myself from the committee. Uh -huh. Is that what I should do? Yeah, so ideally, yes. I that's, should what, because, that, that's what the uh -huh. constitution So I'll, I'll, I'll say part. because maybe my wife does Forex business. Mm -hmm. I will recuse myself because whatever you say here, will influence our discussions about how to do with our business. Uh -huh. But if I know that my wife is in foreign exchange business, uh -huh. governor comes to committee, uh -huh. comes to give us information, and I quietly tell my wife to go and sell, uh -huh. okay, I get you now. Ideally. I get you now. But right. we don't do that. But... Unfortunately. Yeah, so... But we get the information we supply. There, are there any rules about relationship between people in such offices like MPs with private business people? Because, for example, one of the things I know in parliament, in the lobby, mm -hmm. you see that there are a lot of MPs, like during the lunchtime, some people want to come and see them. A lot of time, and sometimes when these people are coming to see them for legitimate or illegitimate reasons. So, like, some businessman can come and say he wants to see mean? MP. Now, if I am a member of a very powerful committee in parliament, which can give tax exemptions, mm -hmm. and then a business owner who is in my constituency comes to see me and say, Charlie, our company, maybe they do steal, mm -hmm. and they say, oh, Charlie, we have a tax exemption we want to pass. So I want you to push it for me. Mm -hmm. Then me, I'm building a house in Trasaco Valley and I need steel. <laughs> All right. So you, you supply steel at a cheap price for me. Mm -hmm. Then when I go to the committee, I say, Charlie, Sky, this tax exemption is very important. Push it. Have I committed an offense? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to practicalize this discussion. Why, why, why do you think Parliament caused itself to be investigated when that story of a certain businessman who mm -hmm. showed up in parliament mm -hmm. to give money so that something could happen. Mm -hmm. Why was parliament worried? Mm -hmm. So conflict of interest can manifest itself in many ways. Yeah. Yes. So I'm buying the steel at a cheaper price. Yes. I'm still paying for it too, yes. but he's done me a favor. Yeah, that's a, you're Because I'm an MP. Yeah, you are in economy. So now if his matter comes to my committee, I should recuse myself. Yeah, that's right. Otherwise, I will not be in a fair, I'll not have a fair mind to say, because you have derived economic be benefits. benefits. So is that why they don't like judges and things to be involved in public things? Because if you're a judge who receives a gift from somebody mm -hmm. and their matter comes before you, you're in a difficult position. Uh -huh. Which is then, why we provide all kinds of things for, for you. Yeah. Okay. So as an MP, you shouldn't be seen to be promoting the private business of somebody mm -hmm. at the behest of the public interest. Yeah, that's uh, okay. Okay. You see? So then we have to widen the net well. Because you are property. It's a, it's a big thing. I'm told it's Article 286, Conflict of Interest. Property. Yeah. Maybe one day we should do a, a, a master class on Conflict of Interest because I think it, it manifests itself in many ways. Yeah. It manifests itself in many ways. But which, as I told you the last time, yeah. I'm not video, I'm not on your That's yeah. the thing you said that worried me. <laughs> what does that want me? No, he was saying, you know, I was, I was trying to say that there are certain things that you shouldn't do. He said that that's why I'm broke because... <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't survive without that without mindset. <laughs> yes. If it's good for the mouth, then the beard also benefits. But that's corruption. Tell me what you only say. You see, Nigeria, when you look at it properly, you can't entirely remove the corruption. So you should leave some for the system because that's how the system runs. No. 